Hey friends, welcome back to Sweet Red Poppy. On today's episode, we are going to be making this 3D face mask. Now, if you haven't seen this type of face mask before, it's probably my favorite and I'm really excited to share it with you. The reason why I like this so much is because the 3D style of this mask, you can see kind of how it pops out. It's actually going to pop away from your face. And what it does is it creates this nice pocket in front of your face where you have a little bit more air to breathe and it doesn't feel so claustrophobic like some of the more fitted masks feel. So the nice thing about this mask is it has this filter pocket. So you could put a filter in. It also has a spot here for a nose wire so that you can get a nice tight fit along the bridge of your nose. And it also has, it can have either elastic or t-shirt ties around the head, which makes it even more comfortable. So this face mask actually comes in seven different sizes. So it's perfect for the entire family. So you can make one for yourself. You can make one for your husband, all of your kids. We have toddler size, child size, preteen size, teen size, adult, and a large adult and an extra large adult. So it fits everyone. And out of all the masks I've made, this one is actually my favorite one so far. So let's go ahead and jump right into our tutorial. For the supplies for this video, make sure that you check the description below. I've linked everything that you will need, and I've also included some places where you can get your supplies. To start with, you will want to download the free PDF pattern. You can find this on sweetredpoppy.com. It's a free download and it has all seven sizes. What you want to do is print this off, and then the first thing you're going to do is measure this one by one inch square, and this is there for accuracy to make sure that your printer printed it off to scale. So go ahead and measure that. If it doesn't come out right, it means that you need to reprint and you might need to adjust your printer settings. So I'm just going to quickly measure mine. Make sure that it has printed off to scale. If you don't check this, it's possible that your pattern doesn't print off to scale, which would really affect the fit of your face mask. You can either tape or glue your pattern together. I'm just going to tape mine together. And what you want to do is align your black lines together and then also align your pink stars. So your pages will overlap slightly. If you want to trim off the excess, you can, or you can just kind of look through your paper. So this is our main mask. Now we're going to put together our filter. Now that your mask has been put together, you need to decide on the size that you want to make. So for myself, if I want a mask that has full coverage and covers my face completely with plenty of room to breathe, then I would make the adult size. If I wanted to have more of a fitted look on my face, I would downsize to the teen, which personally I kind of like the teen one just because it's a little bit smaller, but I know some people prefer to have more room, more breathing room on their face with this specific pattern. So really up to you, but something to keep in mind, all faces are shaped differently. So making a face mask is a little bit like shopping for a bra. You're probably not gonna get a perfect fit on the first one because all faces are different. We have different widths, our chins stick out differently. Everything is shaped a little bit differently. So make the size you think is going to fit, try it on. You may need to make a few small minor adjustments just to get a perfect fit for your face. Go ahead and cut your pattern out. I like using a rotary cutter with this. It just goes a little bit faster, but you do want to make sure that you're being very accurate in these cuttings because it will affect the finished pattern. Now the filter pocket is optional. You can sew this mask with it or without it. So that's really up to you. If you want to have a little bit more protection on your mask, then it's a good idea to go ahead and add that you can place a filter inside, or you could just use the filter pocket as one more added layer of protection. So I'm going to cut that out. If you don't want to use it, then you just sew up the pattern without it. And it doesn't really change the style of the mask. Now that your pattern has been cut out, you want to fold along the corresponding fold line. So I like to take my ruler and use that as a guide. And just create a fold mark. I'm following this pink line. Now 
Now it's time to go ahead and lay out your fabric. For this project, I really like using fat quarters because it's a small, manageable piece of fabric and it's perfect for this project. So what you want to do is lay out your main fabric and your lining. And I like to lay them together so that I can cut two pieces out at once. And what I like to do is place them with wrong sides together, exactly the way that they're going to end up when they're all sewn, because that will help when we're pressing things just to get everything pressed in the right direction. So go ahead and lay those out in front of you, place your pattern piece on top of your fabric, and you can pin it in place and then we will cut it out. I like using my acrylic ruler just to help me get nice sharp cuts on these edges. Go ahead and set your mask aside. It's time to cut out our filter. For the filter pocket, you only need to cut out one layer of fabric. So I just line it up with the corner and then quickly cut the side and the top. And then the very last thing I'm going to cut is going to be my knit tie. So I like to have my ties go all the way around my head. If that's what you want, I recommend cutting it about 35 inches long by one inch wide. If you just want to have your ties go around the back of your ear and tie behind your ear, then usually about 13 inches is a good length for that. So here's an example of what it looks like to have those shorter ties that just go around the backs of your ears. Now, if you don't have knit fabric, you can actually use an old t-shirt for this step and that works really well. I think we all have an old t-shirt that could be cut up. So once this is cut, what you wanna do to create the t-shirt tie is just to pull on it and it kind of rolls on itself. So I just pull the full length of it and it makes this nice stretchy tie. So set that aside. And now we have all four of our pieces are cut out. This next step is for if you're creating the filter pocket. So what you want to do is fold in your sides. So you can fold them in one fourth inch and then one fourth inch again. That will give you a totally enclosed seam or you could just fold them in one half inch. And so it's up to you. I'm going to do one fourth inch and then I'm gonna do an additional one fourth inch just to give myself a nice edge. And if you're not doing the filter, just go ahead and skip this part. I'm gonna go ahead and set my filter aside. And now I want to press my face mask. So what I'm going to do is place this face down on my pressing mat. And you'll remember I put my fabrics together the way that I want them to end up at the very end. So I have my main fabric right here. My lining is here. What I'm going to do is press this away. You wanna make sure that your fabric's completely lined up and then fold it over. Do the same on the bottom. And the nice thing about paper is you can press it with an iron. So you can go ahead and go over this with an iron. If you have tape, watch out for your tape and just turn your steam down. So we are just creating a guide for the little tuck that we will make at the end of the mask. At this point, you can go ahead and remove your pin and set your fabric aside. So I'm just going to sew along the fold of this filter liner. And then repeat the same process on the opposite side. Don't forget to backstitch at the end and cut your threads. Now we are going to line up our filter pocket with our main and lining fabric. What you wanna do is take your lining fabric and find the center. I like to do that by just a little finger press. And I'm gonna do the same with my filter pocket. Just finger press it. Now this filter pocket should go right side facing upwards on top of your lining fabric. It's important that you get this oriented the right way. 
Otherwise, you'll end up with your lining on the outside of your mask, which we don't want. So pin this to the top. You'll notice your filter pocket is smaller than your mask, and this is on purpose, so don't fret. What's going to happen is you're going to pull it down to the bottom. So what I'm going to do is place my mane on top of my lining, lining up the sides and the top and the edges. I'm gonna put a pin through. Now, you can easily just fold this up and pull this down to the bottom, making sure that it's straight and even on both sides. And then pull your mane down as well and pin it all in place. So you do have this little pocket of fabric on either side and that's fine. What you need to do is line up your sides and pin. So now everything is pinned. We are going to sew from this side up along the top down this side. We're going to leave this section unsewn. This is really important because this is where you're going to be turning. Start sewing again down this side, across the bottom, and up this side. Again, you're leaving this side open. This will form your casing, so you don't want to sew that. And I always like to check on the front and the back of my fabric just to make sure everything is lined up well before I sew it. That way I don't have any accidents. So bring this over to your sewing machine, and with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, we're going to sew it all together. Go ahead and sew your masks together. Now, if you're newer to sewing, you can draw in your seam allowances. What you would do is just use a ruler and a washable marker and, and just trace 3 8 of an inch from the edge of your fabric. Um, if you don't want to do that, then what you'll do is just, when you get 3 8 of an inch from the edge of the fabric, lift your presser foot with your needle in the down position and you're going to pivot to your fabric. This is going to give you a nice, sharp angle. Put your presser foot back down and continue sewing. As you approach the end of the seam, make sure that you're back stitching because this seam will have a good amount of pressure placed on it when you're turning it right side out. And you're going to repeat the exact same process on the other side of your mask. Before you turn your mask right side out, you'll want to trim away a little bit of your seam allowance. Now, I typically sew this with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. I find that's the easiest for a beginner, but it does leave a little bit of excess, so I like to trim it away, just so you don't have a lot of bulk when you turn this right side out. Trimming away around your corners will also help you to get a nice sharp corner. So just take a few seconds just to trim it down. I feel like in sewing, a lot of times what will make or break your project, it's these little steps that seem like they're not very important, but they can really elevate your project from looking like it's homemade to looking like it was professionally made. Now I'm going to reach inside of the mask and just turn it right side out. Make sure that you're turning your filter to the wrong side, to the filter side of your mask. I'm going to take a turning tool, and what I'm going to do is stick this inside and push out my corners. I want these to be nice and sharp, so I just gently push into the seam allowance, poking those out. And again, this is just one of those little things that will really give you a nice finish. Once your corners have been pushed out, it is time to press your mask. When you're pressing your mask, what you want to do is roll out your seam allowance with your fingers to the very edge. This is important because you want everything to line up in that last step. So just take a minute to press everything. When I'm pressing, I'm trying to avoid pressing over this line that we created at an earlier step. Again, roll that seam allowance out back and forth between your fingers until you get to the very edge of it. We want nice, sharp corners. At this point, I like to pull my filter pocket together and fold my mask along this fold line that we created earlier. And I'm just going to pin it in place. So that's out of the way. I'm gonna go over those lines again, my pressing lines, 
just making them nice and sharp. Don't forget to use plenty of steam on this step. Using steam when you're pressing is really what sets your pressing in place and gives it a nice clean look. And now we are ready to top stitch. We're going to be top stitching along this edge as well as this edge. This is going to help create that 3D effect where it pops away from your face. So I like to switch over to this little top stitching foot. It just helps me to line everything up. If you don't have one, you're just going to be top stitching 1 8 of an inch away from the edge. And when you're starting, just go slowly. Don't forget to back stitch. Repeat the exact same thing on the opposite side. I'm going to just trim away all of my threads. And then we are going to create our casing. So to create the casing, I like to fold this over about one fourth of an inch. And if you want to measure it, you can. I usually just eyeball it. Press it with plenty of steam. Again, that's what's going to create that nice crisp fold. And then I fold it over about three fourths of an inch usually just to where the stitching ends. Press it really well. And repeat the step on the opposite side as well. Make sure to pin this really well and then we are going to sew along the edge of the casing. So just sew right along here. Do the same on the opposite side as well. Now, when you go to sew this, it can be a little bit tricky because you're sewing over quite a few different layers and sometimes your machine doesn't like that. So what I like to do is I have a little bit of a trick. This is a little piece of scrap fabric. I'm going to fold it in half and then fold it in half again so that I have about four layers. You could even fold it in half again. And then I'm going to slide this underneath my presser foot and start stitching on my scrap piece of fabric. This is called a stitch starter. You can think of it as kind of like a running board for your sewing. What it does is it gets those stitches going really nice and pretty, and then you can easily transition into your actual fabric. And you don't have to worry about that bundle of threads or even like rat's nest that sometimes builds up when you start on a new seam. So go ahead and sew along on here. And then I like to butt this up right against it. And what you want to do is once you hit your real fabric, go forward about two or three stitches, hit your reverse button and back stitch. You wanna lock those stitches in place and then keep sewing forward. And this is just gonna give you really nice, pretty stitches. And when you reach the end, don't forget to back stitch. You don't want this seam to come undone. Once you've finished, go ahead and just trim this away. We're going to repeat the exact same process on the other side. So use your stitch starter again. I'm just lifting my presser foot so I can get that right next to it. Again, few stitches forward, then go backwards, lock everything in place, and go forward again. And I'm just following the edge of that casing, keeping it nice and straight. Back stitch and cut your threads. Now I'm going to open up my flaps and tuck my lining inside. Now that this has been sewn, our lining is actually the same size as our mask. So it ended up working out just fine. It just looks a little funny in the beginning. Also going to trim away my threads. Okay, listen up. This next step is the trickiest part of the entire mask. And it, re it really will either make or break your mask. So you need to get it right. I'm going to demonstrate it a few times to make sure that we get it right. This corner needs to create a 90 degree angle. So it needs to come all the way up to this corner. 
and it should create a straight line that is parallel to the stitching line that we already created. Now, what I've seen some people do is they just fold this up like this. This is not correct. This will not create the 3D effect. You have to pull it upwards and to the side. When you pull it up, it's going to pull this side over and that's correct. It feels like it's not quite right, but it is actually exactly what's supposed to happen. So when we pull it like that, that's what creates the 3D effect and pops it away from our face. So repeat that on the bottom as well, pulling it into that straight parallel to your stitching line. It's going to force your mask to pop up. Repeat this on the opposite side, pulling this over all the way. Make sure that this is nice and flat. Sometimes it takes a few tries to get it just right. And then pin it in place. So if you've done this correctly, your mask will be able to sit upright by itself because it will have the 3D effect that we're going for. If you haven't done this right, your mask will probably fall over because you haven't created your 3D effect. Grab your little stitch starter. Again, you're sewing through even more thickness this time so you can fold your stitch starter in half to give you a good start. And then line this up with your stitch starter. And you're going to be sewing a line that is parallel to the line that you have already created. So get that smooth transition. Go backwards, back stitch, locking your stitches in place, and then continue forward. And sometimes I find it's easier to fold this side of the mask in or to fold it backwards. Might need to be adjusted a little bit. And that's totally normal. Sometimes I do sew over my needle when I'm doing this mask just because it's nice to have everything pinned in place. Normally, I wouldn't recommend that. Okay, trim away your stitch starter and repeat this on the opposite side as well. Now that you've sewn your casings, if you would like to add a nose bridge, what you want to do is just sew about 3 8 of an inch from the edge of the fabric right along here. Trim away those little threads and you can slide your nose bridge right into this little pocket. What's nice about this is it creates a removable nose bridge. That way, if you wanna wash your mask, you can just take your little nose bridge out. I'm gonna push this right in here. You can also put a little filter into this area. This is a filter that I ordered on Amazon. I'm going to slide this in here, it fits perfectly. I will link to that in the description if you want to order that as well. Tuck your filter back in to the folds. Now it's time to create your knit tie. You can decide how you want this to look. It can go around the back of your head and tie at the back, or it can go around your ears. So either way works. What you want to do for the side ear tie is put a safety pin on the end of your piece of knit fabric and you're just going to feed it through the casing that we created. The safety pin really helps this. So if you want the side ear tie, this is what you're going to do and repeat that on the opposite side. I like to put a pony bead on my side tie. What that does is allows you to adjust how tight it is. So I just take a child's pony bead. I use a regular size, nothing specific. And the way that I get that onto the knit fabric is I use a little piece of floral wire, put my pony bead on there, open the top up a little bit and slide one of my knit t-shirt ties through. And then I just push my pony bead on there. I'm going to slide this through again, slide my tie inside of my wire and then push it onto this one as well. If your tie is thinner, you can do those at the same time, but if it's thicker, you'll have to break up that into two steps. 
And then the ends of these really need to be tied with a knot at the end. That way, if your pony bead tries to come off, it well, it won't come off. This will prevent it. So now you have an adjustable ear strap. Alternatively, you could do a strap that goes around your head. So I'm gonna show you that option as well. Again, put your safety pin and just slide it through. You wanna start on one side going upwards. Remember there's a top and a bottom to this mask. So if you're doing the around the head tie, start from the bottom, go upwards, make sure the top is up here, and then you're going to feed this back down. Pull this all the way through. And you wanna leave some knit t-shirt tie at the top because this is going to be going all the way around your head. And then you remove your safety pin and tie a knot in the bottom. That way it doesn't come undone. So when you place this on your head, this strap is going to go around the back of your head. Your nose bridge gets pushed down and then this ties behind your head. So it will look like this. You have a nice big area that you can breathe in. Again, this is, is this is the teen size on an adult. Um, so it's definitely more fitted than some of the larger ones. If you want more breathing room, go ahead and size up. But out of all the masks I've made, this one is definitely my favorite. It's the one that I have been wearing out and about when I have to leave the house. I feel like I have the most breathing room. I also have the most protection and it's the most comfortable of all the ones I've made. And I love that it fits my entire family as well. I hope you enjoy this video and that you enjoyed learning how to make this 3D mask. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and go ahead and share it with your friends if you think they would enjoy it too. Don't forget to subscribe to Sweet Red Poppy. That way you find out every time I have a new crafting or sewing video that goes live. I'll see you guys next week.